Hello there, it is the last day of the pre-season in the Atlantic Ocean today. Uh, as we enter June the 1st, that is the beginning of the Atlantic hurricane season. And uh, as we've been following for quite a while, we're making predictions on what's coming up this season. And uh, now is the time to tell you, just again to remind you what is on the cards. In the Atlantic we are expecting 13 named storms, according to my screen here, 7 hurricanes and 3 major hurricanes. There is a fairly decent chance of it being above average as well, but we can't commit to that confidence uh, at this stage. Now in the Eastern Pacific we are expecting 17 tropical storms, according to our April forecast, 9 hurricanes and 4 major hurricanes. Now there is a possibility that that could go above average as well looking at the current patterns um, but at the minute we're sticking with those numbers unless we put out a new forecast in the future. Those again are April forecast numbers and out in the western Pacific we're expecting 27 named storms, 14 typhoons and 10 major typhoons, that's category 3 or higher. And of course in the western Pacific we do expect um, every so often to get a super typhoon, quite possibly a category 5. So those are the numbers that we're expecting in the main three basins in the northern hemisphere this year. Of course we've already had subtropical storm Andrea. Now as we take a look on our board here you can see what's expected in terms of the aerial coverage for this year. In the Atlantic, we're really our, our main area of concern in America, in the United States at least, is the areas in the Deep South, so Mississippi, Alabama, along there, statistically the highest chance, um, one of the highest chances of tropical storm conditions this year, along with a, a sizable swathe of the East Coast. Uh, extending from just about to South Carolina all the way up towards the outer banks of North Carolina and maybe into Southern Virginia. So if you look at that, those areas of uh, potential impacts, we're really looking towards those storm tracks that could cause that kind of impact. So generally we're looking at maybe things coming from uh, the Caribbean area uh, or just north of the Caribbean islands coming from the main development region of the Atlantic sweeping up towards the US East Coast um, and also Gulf, uh, Gulf of Mexico formations perhaps but also the possibility for storms tracking from the Atlantic main development region through the Caribbean and then up towards the Gulf Coast. So we could be talking about maybe a Hurricane Allen, although I wouldn't say that the final part of that storm would be particularly likely. What might be more likely this year is a Hurricane Ivan. That one of course being one of the very strong storms and one of the most impactful storms in 2004. Um, the decent analogues this year, there aren't really any that are very good standing out but some of the best analogues at the minute, 2017, believe it or not, and 2005. Now let's not panic just yet, because 2005 is a very, very distant second, very distant, um, but we could be seeing something like that developing this year. Of course, it could be uh, like one of the other se active seasons that we've had in the past where all the storms miss, uh, like a 2010, even though not all of them missed, of course, but the lion's share of storms did miss the US. Another decent analogue from the past is 1995, particularly in the Atlantic, not so much around the world, but the Atlantic had a warm pool in the central to northern Atlantic towards the Azores in 1995, just as it does this year so far, and a cooler pool off towards the north, towards the uh, Atlantic Canada region. So that is something interesting to note for the Atlantic at least. All right, let's look towards the uh, Eastern Pacific as I loaded up here. Um, Obviously the tracks are much more easier to predict over there in the Eastern Pacific, but we are expecting a, a particularly um, high chance, elevated chance of storm conditions to be impacting the Baja California region, particularly Baja California Sur, obviously, because that sticks out a little bit more than further north, uh, but we could be seeing some major hurricane impacts on that region possibly this year. Apart from that, nothing really notable. Perhaps we'll be seeing some long tracking storms that stay out at sea and a very small chance of hurricane or tropical storm impacts in Hawaii. 
Looking towards the Western Pacific, obviously that is something we're going to be watching closely too this year. Um, the main areas that we've got on our table at the minute is obviously the northern part of the Philippines. It's a hot spot anyway, but this year more so. Um, and for storms to continue through towards southern China, towards Hainan and northern Vietnam in particular. Further north, we're looking for potential storm tracks to take storms into southern Taiwan, uh, possibly further north maybe, um, but that could be another significant storm track for this year, and also potential storms striking Japan from the south, curving up towards, uh, from, towards Kyushu and then up towards the northeast. Um, if we look at the map here, you can see the highest chances of typhoon conditions uh, this year will be in southern China and on Hainan Island. The northern Philippines high chance, the southern tip of Kyushu and those islands to the south of Ryukyu Islands, high chances along those areas too. That's pretty typical, but even more so than average this year we could be seeing some major typhoon impacts. So that is a look at what is going on this year, what we're expecting. And uh, let's not forget, June 1st, it's the start of the Atlantic hurricane season. It doesn't magically mean that storms will form en masse. It could take a little while before we see our next system, which will be named Barry.